Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode, I'm going to be discussing something with you that has been requested by some of you. And this is the approach phase. Why is it there? When should you activate it? And uh, how do you use it correctly? Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, I would like to address something that uh, seems to be causing some confusion with some people. So we have a button here that says approach and down here we have the approach face. If you click on performance, you see this here. Uh, these two things, approach face and the approach button, have actually nothing to do with one another. Some people seem to think if you push this button it will activate the approach phase or vice versa. No, uh, this is something completely different and the only thing we will be talking about today is this here on the performance page, the approach phase. So whenever you press performance you can see here what phase the aircraft is in. So right now we're in the cruise phase and the next phase you can see here is going to be the descent phase and after that we have the approach phase and should you you know screw up we have the go around phase so these are the phases and the one that is currently active you can see here is in green and will be displayed to you the aircraft will automatically recognize which phase is appropriate so once we start the descent it will automatically go into the descent phase so what is the approach phase? Well, the definition is that um, it is a flight phase where the aircraft transitions from descent to final approach for landing managed by the flight management system. So what does that mean? Essentially what it means is once the aircraft reaches a certain point away from the airport, it will automatically jump into the approach phase and that means it will start slowing down the aircraft. It will slow down to the appropriate speed for the flap setting you are in. So if you're at flap zero, it will automatically reduce the speed to minimum clean and will hold it there until you select flaps one and then it will reduce further to the next speed and then you put down flaps two and so on and so on until you with gear down flaps full or flaps three if that's your landing config and then uh, basically the aircraft is set up for landing. So the idea is that you don't have to fiddle around with the speed or do anything like that. The aircraft will take care of everything. The only thing you have to do is set the flaps and put the gear down. The rest is all managed by the aircraft. And the beauty of this is that uh, with all the flap setting changes and everything this will prevent that you have a flap over speed or maybe that you go below F speed or S speed, which you shouldn't do. Uh, so the aircraft will take care of everything. And since the approach, especially the final approach, is uh, quite uh, intense in terms of workload, this is actually a pretty good thing to do. The thing, of course, is this will only work if the aircraft knows exactly what you're going to fly. Otherwise, it has no idea how far away you are from the airport and how far away you are from the threshold. So here we, you can see we have this approach here into Munich Airport and here you have this circle with a D and this means decelerate. So once we pass this point here, D, the aircraft will automatically go into the approach phase and start decelerating the aircraft without us doing anything. Of course this only works if you manage speed if you select the speed, then that's all down to you. So I would say the first approach that we fly, we'll just do it as intended by Airbus and let the aircraft do everything. Okay, so we have now turned here basically on a downwind sort of leg and you can see the D is coming up. So this is the point where we would jump automatically into the approach phase. So we can see here the aircraft is currently in the descent phase and once we pass this point it should all by itself jump 
into the approach phase. So let's wait for that. And there we are. It has just jumped into the approach phase and now you can see the target speed up here is 114 knots. So the aircraft is now performing a level off because it says here we're not allowed to go below 5000. It does that automatically and now it's descending further. You can see the speed keeps coming back and once we passed VFE next we can already put down flaps 1. So this is all done automatically, so you can just concentrate on the radio and on everything else and the speed and everything else is going to be taken care of by the FMS. Okay, we are now 10 knots below VFE next. This is the trigger to put down flaps 1. And you can see the aircraft keeps decelerating and uh, if we wouldn't do anything it would just stop at S speed and hold it there all by itself. So we're just going down, we're just below the glide which allows us to bleed off some of the speed and then the aircraft is going to join the ILS here and land. We can see the runway over there so this is all very nice. Okay we're at S speed so we put down flaps 2 and we had six miles, so at this point I would already put down the gear. So gear down. And then the aircraft just keeps decelerating all by itself. And this is essentially what the approach phase is for. It takes away all the workload from you. Just be aware that the approach phase is not perfect. You can see here we're at five miles, we're still doing 180 knots. Uh, for me personally, that's a bit too sporty. Uh, we have the gear down now, so we can go to flaps 3 and we can go flaps full and uh, it's going to be tight but we're going to make it, the aircraft is going to slow down. So you might want to assist the aircraft a little bit with the speed brake, uh, nothing wrong with that and uh, just keep an eye on it. But generally speaking it does a good job and it helps you to get all the way to the runway at the right speeds and all you have to worry about is um, the flaps and the landing gear and that's it so we're now fully set up we are on speed everything is done and the runway is straight ahead of us so we can just land the aircraft okay so now let's look at a completely different case okay we are back in the air same approach, same situation. However, now we're going to do it differently. So it's a calm day today in Munich and this is very common that ATC will tell you after NAPSA, fly heading 330, radar vectors for ILS 26 left. So what that means is you're going to be flying this heading and then you're going to get some other headings and they're going to get you directly onto the ILS. So none of this is actually going to be flown which means if you now go to heading you can see the D point has gone white and this means the aircraft is no longer sure what the distance is to the threshold and therefore can no longer know when to activate the approach phase so from this moment on you have to activate it yourself so the question now is, when should you activate the approach phase? Well, it really depends if you stay in managed speed or selected speed. So we, we can see here the ATC probably wants us to fly this. So that means we are way too high. So in this case, I would go to selected speed, speed up. Let's go to 310 for now. We go into open descent and that way we get a nice high descent rate. You can see here, this is where we level off at 5,000 feet that's coming in. We should make sure that we get that somewhere here. In this case, you are taking care of the speed and you'll probably take care of the speed until you're on the ILS. So then it's up to you really. You can activate the approach phase whenever you want. Um, some pilots do it at 10,000 feet if they know they're going to be flying with uh, selected speed. Others do it when they're cleared for the approach. So this is really up to you. The only thing you need to be aware of 
If you have the yo-yo here that tells you whether you are too high or too low, uh, once you activate the approach phase, the yo-yo will take the minimum clean speed to calculate whether you are too high or too low. So it may no longer be accurate if you select something else up here. So the most important thing though is that you must activate the approach phase. Why is that? So if you go onto the ILS here now and uh, you start, you know, reducing 180, 160 gear down and then you say, okay, manage speed and you're still in descent phase, the aircraft will accelerate to 250 knots. And that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. If you're on the ILS with gear down, flaps to quite low and all of a sudden the engines spool up and the aircraft starts accelerating, so that's no good. So one of the things I always do before I select manage speed on the ILS, I always take a look down here, are we in the approach phase? So there's no right or wrong answer in terms of when should you activate the approach phase. You just need to be aware of these things. You must activate it, you, so you must have it active when you are flying the final approach. I know my company has a recommendation, and that recommendation is that it should be no more than 1.5 nautical miles from the threshold, but that's a recommendation, and that has to do with the yo-yo so you can use the yo-yo to tell you whether you are too high or too low all the way till just before you join the ILS anyway. So basically that's how that works, that's the approach phase. Mm -hmm. So it's already activated here, which is nice. We're now going to be flying this uh, manually. Uh, as you can see we're still too high, so we need to request um, more track miles. Also, we are passing through the localizer, which is no good in Munich because they have two parallel runways. So I'm going to take myself round here. There we are. Let's already put that on for later. And then you just fly the approach. So I hope this sort of um, explains how the approach phase works, why it is there, and when you should activate it. Like I said, there's no proper procedure, at least I could never find one written down with an exact mileage or exact point in the flight where you have to activate it. This is more like um, airmanship. If you fly a fully managed approach, then you don't have to do anything anyway. The aircraft will do it by itself. If you fly into a very busy airport, like let's say London Heathrow, uh, Heathrow ATC will give you speeds all the way down to the threshold and you need to fly them very precisely because it's a very busy environment. Then of course you need to activate the approach phase yourself. So I don't know, pick, pick 10,000 feet, that I, I think that's pretty good. Or maybe if you are very dependent on the yo-yo to help you to show where you're too high or too low then of course you can pick something a bit later maybe uh, when you say we're cleared for the approach and we're about to join the localizer or something like that so that's essentially how that works as you can see it's not that difficult but i can see how some people may get a bit confused all right i'm gonna leave it there i hope you found this interesting i hope you found it useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next one until then all the best. Bye-bye.